This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Currently, eight states have laws allowing recreational use of marijuana. Well, after the next election, there will be even more. Currently, over 30 states have legalized medical marijuana. Plus, the industry itself is becoming a major financial player in our economy. Where does the Bible stand on believers who are asking the question, can I have cannabis? Daniel Fusco is the pastor of Crossroads Community Church in Vancouver and Portland. He's author of the book, Upward, Inward, and Outward. And it's been six years since the state of Washington legalized marijuana for recreational purposes. And Daniel, uh, thanks for joining us today. Has there been any, any big issues with, with questions about you and other faith leaders about whether or not recreational use of marijuana is a sin? Or is it, how, how do you handle that in your church? Well, absolutely. That's a question that we get uh, pretty regularly, not only from uh, people who are uh, exploring Jesus uh, at Crossroads, not people who would be uh, people of faith per se, but uh, also now that it's legalized, there's a lot of questions from people who've been walking with Jesus. So how, how are we supposed to navigate that? So the, the first thing that I always say as it relates to, um, to marijuana is there is a legitimate medical uh, Mm -hmm. reasons that, that a doctor would prescribe uh, marijuana uh, to, to be able to deal with different health issues. So I always make a distinction between under a doctor's care as opposed to recreational use because we have to make that distinction because there are legitimate medical uses for it. As it relates to uh, the recreational use of not only marijuana but, but pretty much anything else, I always make the case that the Bible is really interested in what, what influence are you under. So there's that beautiful mm -hmm. passage uh, in the book of Ephesians that says that uh, we should be under the influence of the Holy Spirit as opposed to being drunk with wine. And so really what God is interested in for us as humans is that we would be under the influence of His Spirit and not anything else. And so that's really where the crooks of the issue lands for us as we talk about it here at Crossroads. So we're, we're talking about with the recreational use, we're talking about it's a, a, an hallucinogen. Do you differentiate that with someone who's using casually using wine at home? Well, so yeah, so the, the, with the idea of alcohol, obviously as it relates to the Bible, if we were being real stringent, the Bible is against drunkenness, which our mm. laws today would characterize as being under the influence of it. Now, um, the idea of being able to drink a glass of wine and not being under it, its influence from a biblical perspective, a fermented drink was one of the most safe beverages to drink. This was long before we had purified water of all sorts. So fermentation in drinks in uh, the culture of the Bible uh, was probably safer than, than a lot of just regular water. Now, at the same time, I think there are some people who their conscience uh, before God and their desires would say that I'm never going to drink alcohol uh, from a spiritual perspective. And that's not only true for people who follow Christianity. You can find people in, in every major of the world religions as well as people who don't follow uh, traditional religions who would all say, I don't want to put that into my body. And so I think from a spiritual perspective, there are certain people who will choose to abstain. Now other people, of course, they would say, um, I feel the liberty to drink, but almost everybody would, would make a distinction between being under its influence and having a drink casually. Someone coming into your church now, I mean, it's so pervasive on the West Coast, the use of uh, recreational marijuana. Someone coming into your church now and they're using that, they, they haven't seen any issues with it as far as they're concerned, uh, and, they're, and they want to follow Christ. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your counsel with them? So my counsel for everybody now, and it's interesting, where we are, uh, we have uh, in the Portland, Oregon metro area, and before I got here, I was in the San Francisco Bay area, is that really the issue for almost everybody is Jesus accepts all of us just as we are when we show up. And I, we like to say that we're all in process, whether somebody's been walking with Jesus for decades or whether they're just exploring Jesus right now. When, you, when a person comes to Jesus and decides to surrender their life to Jesus and begin following Jesus, Jesus doesn't like do a checklist. Well, do you do this? Do you do this? Do you do this? Are you involved in this? Because if you do those things, you can't follow me. He doesn't do that. He says, will you follow me? And then as we walk together, I'm going to change your life. So whether it relates to uh, recreational uh, drug use of any sort, uh, lifestyle choices, I always tell people at Crossroads, if you're looking for Crossroads to be a church that just affirms you and all your decisions just as you are, then you're really not going to enjoy Crossroads because Jesus invites all of us to change. He wants to change us. He wants to transform us. 
And for all of us, those transformation happens at different steps in the journey. So we don't ask anybody, you know, to do you do this, do you do this, and if you do, you can't be here. We open the doors wide and we let Jesus sort out what he's doing in people's lives. But if someone were to ask me specifically, I use marijuana recreationally, I will talk to them about how God's only desire for you as a human being is to be under the influence of his Holy Spirit. And if you're under the influence of THC or marijuana or uh, alcohol or... Um, you know, uh, prescription drugs that you're using uh, in, in an addictive way or in a way to uh, inebriate yourself or any of those things, that that is, that is missing God's best for you. And that if you, as you walk with Jesus, he is going to ask you to change that and you have to make that decision. Yeah, what, what's been the church's position? I mean, this has been five or six years in Washington. What's been the church's position in, in even speaking to those, those changes in our society? If uh, we've got a referendum coming up that's going to legalize uh, recreational use of marijuana, where should the church be? As it's, should it even have a position to, to, to speak to those issues? Well, I think absolutely, as it relates to the government, I mean, we're blessed that we live in a society where we're allowed to vote on these issues. And uh, it's, everybody brings their faith-based beliefs into the way that they vote on issues. And so I think absolutely for a Christian, as for anybody, whatever they believe in, they're going to vote based on their own conscience. And so I think absolutely uh, Christians should vote against things that they don't agree with. They should vote for things that they do agree with. And everybody does that. It's not just true. You know, we have this discussion in our culture today where it's like, well, you shouldn't bring your faith into uh, politics. But everybody brings their faith into politics. Sure. If somebody doesn't believe in organized religion, then they bring that faith-based belief into their voting. And so I think it's totally acceptable in American culture for everyone to bring their values and vote on it. Now, ultimately, whatever the laws decide, as a follower of Jesus, I don't ask the U.S. government or the will of the people through voting to be my final authority on what is right and wrong. I believe that uh, Jesus and his word is that. And because of that, when our culture has legalized all sorts of things that I think is against God's heart, it's not good for society. But our job is not to yell at people or, or hate people because our culture has voted for things that, um, that we don't see to be uh, building up or encouraging or in the best interest of humanity or gives God glory. But at the same time, our job is to walk in the light as, as he is in the light. And, and our job is to, to live a unique life in the midst of this. And that's been true for followers of Jesus, whether it's in the Roman Empire, you know, in, in any culture, uh, we're called to live subversively uh, in the world in which we live. And how do you, how do you uh, counsel people that uh, they really are looking at th the medical uh, benefits of, of le legalized marijuana? How do you counsel them when it, it is a, an hallucinogen? A lot of other prescription drugs are as well, but I mean, it can deal with all kinds of things like depression and glaucoma and, and issues like that. How do you, how do you yeah. counsel someone in your church that it's considering uh, using marijuana for medical reasons? So, you know, and that's a great question. And I always joke that, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't play a doctor on TV. I need you know, to and so, uh, or, you know, or on radio, none of, none of us do. But I, it really boils down to a question of conscience. So, mm -hmm. like, anytime you go to a doctor, if you get surgery, right, for pain management, they're going to most likely prescribe opioids to you. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, under the control of a doctor's care, there is legitimate medical uh, realities that this helps in. But the problem always becomes is that if, if we begin to abuse these things, then it becomes a big problem. So I was just actually talking to someone just recently here at Crossroads where because of uh, decades of medical issues, the doctor's been talking to them about using uh, some of the, the THC, CBD uh, derivatives. And I said, well, what do you think? And they said, well, I, I really, I don't feel comfortable doing it. And I said, okay, well, great. So you're asking your doctor for alternatives. And, she, and they said, absolutely. And I said, okay, well, you're going you're gonna to try the alternatives then. And they say, absolutely. And so, you know, if, if we have something that violates our conscience, I also know people who, because of uh, past addictions, they won't go anywhere near any of the pain management opioids because they've abused them in the past. And I think that's just wisdom. You know, we have to make sure we don't put ourselves in the name of trying to get healthy in a, in a, in a more unhealthy position. So, but I think it's, if, if it, if it's within a doctor's care uh, and it's not being abused outside of that or even under the authority of a doctor's care, uh, there is legitimate medical uses. And I don't know that we want to say that we should never do that because it is within the doctor's care. 
Well, look, looking at your book, Upward, Inward, and Outward, Love God, Love Yourself, and Love Others. Tell me about your book a little bit and where people can pick that up. Yeah, so my, my book, Upward, Inward, and Outward, is, for me, it's, I wanted to write a book that was about the most important thing in Christianity. And, and really, they asked Jesus, and I believe that not only was Jesus the greatest person who ever lived, I mean, I believe he was the Savior. He was God in the mm -hmm. flesh. And because of that, he's also the greatest teacher who ever lived. And they asked the greatest person who's the greatest teacher, what's the greatest commandment? What's the most important thing? And Jesus quoted two Old Testament scriptures, first from Deuteronomy 6, that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. I call that living upward, our relationship mm -hmm. with God, or better yet, the relationship that God wants to have with us. And then the second from Le uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And so I get the live inward, you love your neighbor as you love yourself, so that's inward. Your relationship with God drives the way you see yourself and your identity. And then you love your neighbor, which is outward. And so I really wanted to write a book about um, how do we cultivate this life in three directions, upward, inward, and outward. I, I call it a God-breathed system for living. And you, people can pick it up wherever they like to buy books. Obviously, okay. um, Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, all of the, uh, the mail order uh, places, they all have it. Uh, if you go to a store that actually has books, I know that's kind of a, a lost, <laughs> yeah, uh, a lost art in our culture, but uh, they might have it there or you can ask them to get it for you. Well, after speaking to you about this, there's a lot of other things we want to talk to you about, Daniel, so we want to get you back on the show. Again. Oh, I would love that. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.